What's up guys, today we're continuing our adventures into 3D. Today we're covering 3D text. Everything you need to know about 3D text infusion. Man, that title is entirely too long. Back it up. How about everything 3D text? Much better. I have spoken. With that, let's get into it. Transition. 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 All right guys, we are gonna go over 3D text today and everything that you should probably know about it. But also I'm gonna show you how to make some stuff because what's the point of learning something if you can't make something cool? You know what we're gonna make? You're gonna make your very own loading screen. That's it, I know. Okay, maybe we'll spice it up a little. All right, to start off, I have this 3D text, duh. If I go ahead and open that up in the expector, we can see everything that you have underneath the text tab. So this is basically everything that you have for a 2D text. We have our field, we have our font. Now a word of warning on the font. I have a normal text here. And the reason is if you find a font that is not compatible with 3D, it will crash resolve. So I just have a normal text. And if I want to look at the fonts, I'll just bring that up to my viewer. So it only crashes when it's in the viewer. So make sure you have your 2D text, not 3D text in the viewer. And then you can just scrub through all your stuff and see which kind of text you want. And once you have that, then you can go over to your 3D text, change that. And if it's compatible, it won't hurt anything. It'll just bring it up. But a surefire way to crash resolve is to open up this font and start scrolling through them. So with that out of the way, you can change other parameters. You can change it from bold to italic, change the color, change the size. Tracking is the spacing between letters. You also have your line spacing. Anchors justifies the normal text tools that you'd use. The more interesting one that you might want to use is write on. That You can animate that to write on your text like a typewriter. You can also animate it to come off, or you could just have pieces of it coming on and off, however you'd like. That's one that you'd use more often than any of the others to make effects. The one that you really want to look at is extrusion. Now this is where we start departing from 2D text. Extrusion here, you might notice that my 3D text is flat. Here's how we give it the 3D style. You can change the extrusion depth. You can change extrusion subdivisions. It really doesn't do anything. It just increases the faces on that mesh. There's also a bevel down here. I will get into that in a second. But I want to touch on the difference between 3D text and 3D objects. If you saw my video on 3D shapes, you know that we don't have this extrusion depth or thickness. So there's no way to thicken up 3D shapes. We can, however, increase the mesh. By the way, if you need to see something in this viewer, go ahead and go down to lights and you'll see it a lot better. And I'll just click on wireframe to show you this. We can increase our mesh count, but we can't increase the thickness, or extrude it rather. The exact opposite is true with 3D text. We increase this extrusion depth, but you can't change the mesh on any of these faces. So with 3D shapes, we could use something like a fast noise, and we could scale it to make all these interesting shapes. You could change it on the X or the Y, and you could form shapes. That is not true with 3D text. Since we can't increase the mesh, we just get a big mess right here. You can see it kind of distorts it, but that's because there's only a single face here and it's trying to do a whole bunch of movements with it. You'll find the same thing if you go into a 3D software, just have a couple faces on it and then try to bend it or move it around, you'll get this kind of deformation. And things like having this black dot, which we could do on a 3D shape, we could just move this around to get some interesting looks, will not work on 3D text. So we're basically limited to the extrusion depth, but there are a few things that we can do to make this a little more interesting. Under bevel depth here, you might notice it doesn't do anything. It actually won't do anything until I, I do both of them. And then you can get a nice bevel on it. You can just right click, go to expression, and then just drag and chain these two together. Now I have a nice uniform bevel I can put on it. But there are a few other things that we can do under extrusion style. We can go from classic to custom. And this is basically your bevel profile. It'll make this nice slope on the front side and nice slope on the back side. If I were to change that, now I have a slope on the front. I don't have anything on the back, but I can also add in points and do some kind of crazy things. I can click a point, hit S, and I can smooth it out. So I can get a little bit more character in my 3D text. But let's go over the other tabs because that's where the more interesting stuff can happen. So under layout, we have we have our type, we have point, we have frame, which I haven't found a good use for, but we have things like circle, which will put your text on a circular path. You can adjust that, the radius of that circle with this width. And of course you can adjust basically the size, your Z position. You can also adjust how the text looks on different layers of this circle. I can adjust spacing to fit. I can do horizontal size to fit. This will stretch it out or I can size to fit all. So instead of stretching it, it'll adjust the size to go around the circle uniformly. Besides the circle path, you can also change just to a normal path. Now, if you click on this, you should have a tool that you can draw your own shape with. Now, if that doesn't pop, go ahead and click on the spline. Then you'll see all these tools come up and then just click back on your 3D text and you should have it there. And then you can just draw in your own shape. It's a little hard to see there, but you can draw in your own shape and then go back to your text. You could size it down and I recommend sizing it down. And if you go back to layout, you can do position on path and then you can draw your own shape, animate things around. One last thing to talk about on the layout tab is rotation. 
Under rotation, we have this to basically rotate our entire word. Now this is different when we come to the transform tab. Under the transform tab, these actually move individually. So we have two types of rotation there, but I can also just switch it right here in the transform as well. I have characters, I have individual words, and I have lines here. And of course we can do other things like shear, size control, X and Y. And between these two, you'll cover almost all of your movements. There's a few more things on the shading tab. Now there's this transform over here. I would just ignore it. These are all basically redundant parameters that you'll find on any of these tabs. But once you get your text in place, let's start messing with how it looks. So we have shading here and we can of course change the color. We can change how this lighting's hitting it. You can see the specular intensity moving, more position, more rotation. So there's a lot of redundant parameters down here. You'll notice that we don't have the other options like adding an outline or adding a drop shadow here like we would on 2D text. The main ones that you're going to want to focus on in the shading tab is the opacity. If you need to change the opacity of your text, it'll be under shading. There's also this option not just to do solid, but we can also do an image. So as soon as I click that in, you'll notice it adds in another little input here. And if I have some sort of video, I can just plug that right in there. And I have this particle effect. You can kind of see the particles moving. It doesn't look great on the side. So the way to fix that is to go here and click this one, use one material. And then if I go down to the bevel material, which will be the sides, I can just copy and paste this in right here. And now I have the video playing on the side as well. All right, so we can use a video, but there are a few other things we can do as well. If we go down to here to tool, tool will be for video. You can also use something like clip. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this back to one material. If I use clip, it allows me to browse for an image that I can put on there. Now I can throw in an image as whatever I had in my download folder. I can use two materials there. Again, for the side or front. We also have one other thing called Brush. Brush uses built-in images in DaVinci Resolve in kind of an interesting way. If I go ahead and go through these, there's Bomb, Fish, Flake, Snowflake's kind of cool, Seagulls, I assume, Leaf, Stars, there's a Swirl, all sorts of things. It's kind of interesting because you can see it changes the text style a bit, and some of it even becomes invisible. I'm not sure what you would use those for, but I just want to let you know that they're there. But wait, there's more. All right, so the last basic thing I want to cover are just the modifiers. If I go back to my text here, I right click, I can actually add in a few modifiers. Character level styling, which allows you to change individual letters to different fonts, won't work on 3D text. That is for 2D text only. You can do things like a text scramble or a text timer or even a time code. Those will work just like 2D text. The one you want to focus on is follower. And this is where we will start building in our animation. As soon as I right click and add in the follower, I can go to modifiers tab up here. This is just going to animate something between our letters here or our words, depending on how we do it. We can animate color, we can animate motion. We're going to animate a motion in this case. I'm going to set my delay to four because I find that's a pretty good starting point for what I want to do. Under text, there's basically nothing you have to worry about. You can change your text and size if you really need to, but I prefer to do that just on the home tab. Now you might think transform is where we're going to add in the motion, but there's actually no center X or center Y here. So there's nothing that we're actually going to do there. It's actually going to be underneath shading. So here on the shading tab, we have, you know, these other features, outline and drop shadow. They don't actually function, so we're not going to worry about those. And anything that we want to do with the 3D text will be back on our tools underneath our shading tab there. What we are going to worry about on this modifiers tab under shading is position. So down on position and even rotation we have our offset for X and our offset for Y, and that's where we're gonna get our motion. You would notice if you start changing these, nothing happens. This is a key theme for the follower. Nothing will happen until you add a keyframe. As soon as I add in a keyframe, I get this sub modifier, this path here. And this is going to be modifying our X and Y position. And it's not going to be the center X and center Y. It's actually going to be these rotations. These rotations are going to actually move in an arc X and Y. And these will actually be what we use our animation for. So again, if I try and move it. I can move it a little bit, but I don't get that nice sweeping effect I want. To get that, I'm going to have to add in a keyframe. So I'm going to move all the way back to the beginning. I'm going to add in a keyframe. Again, nothing's going to happen for that motion. And here's where the magic happens. But don't tell anyone, it's a secret. You made a video! The magic happens when I add in a second keyframe. So I'm going to move down my timeline, say frame 100, and then I can start moving this. You notice as I move it, these things start to get more and more apart. And so you can have all sorts of animations. You can have just individual jumping letters, this nice wave effect, which is what we're going for. You can just dial that back down. And what I'm going to do with that, I'm just going to do one jump. So I'm going to put this at 360, show you what it does here. It's just going to go up and then it's going to go down. If I want to add more delay to it, I can go back to my follower, go back to timing, and I can increase that. 
And if I want more rotations, I can go back to my path, go to keyframe 100, and I can make this like 1800 or something so I get a lot more rotations in there. So that's the X position. So what can I do with the Y? So the Y, instead of going up and down, it goes side to side. So we got this text coming in and out. And Z is just gonna be a combination of the two. So we're gonna have our letters coming together, going apart and jumping up and down. And that's really what I'm gonna use. So I'm gonna change this to 1800. I'm gonna make sure that this delay is set back to four. Actually, I'm gonna set it to one, not four. Now I get this jumping text animation. It's gonna go around a few times and then stop. Have our 3D text, now we need the look. So what I'm gonna do for that is I'm gonna hit Control C, I'm gonna hit Control Shift V, and I'm gonna paste an instance. For the instance, de-instance both of these bevels here. Go shading tab and I'm going to de-instance this color group. So then I can change color and I can also change the size a little bit. So just so I can see it, I'm gonna change the color of that a little bit. I'm gonna add in a 3D merge. All right, but now you can't really see my text because they're right on top of each other. So on this instance, I'm gonna to go to my extrusion depth. I need to de-instance that as well. And I'm gonna increase it by 0.02. And then I'm gonna go back to my main text and then I'm going to go down to bevel width. And I'm just going to increase that slightly and that's going to give me some thickness. So now I have this text within the other text. I have two different colors going on. It's not centered, so I'm going to have to recenter that. So I'm going to go to my instance and go over to my shading. I'm going to go down to offset, de-instance that and my pivot and de-instant that as well. And I'm going to make this negative 0.01 to center it. Now to counteract that, because when it starts moving, these text is going to go apart because they have different pivots. I'm going to have to put in 0.01. So now when this animation goes, they'll stay together. This is really important when we add in the rotation, which I didn't do. So let's go ahead and add in the rotation. I'm going to go to my main text. I'm going to go to my modifiers. I'm going to go to my follower, not the path. And I'm going to go shading and down to rotation. I'm going to change the Y rotation. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to go to the same frame and I'm just going to change it to, I'm going to change this to 1800. And I'm going to change the other one back to 360. So I'm going to go to my path. This one should have been 360. And now you can see our text jumping around. Nice, smooth animation. And if I hadn't fixed the pivot on this, only shows up on one side and they start coming apart. So remember to do that if you want this animation to work correctly. But let's spruce this up a bit. Let's add in a video. Let's add in some texture to the side. So let's start with the sides here. So our main text here, we're going to add in a material. We could just add an image or something, but I want to show you how we can add in a material. There's actually no material input. Shapes do, text does not. Let's add an effect that's already in DaVinci Resolve. If I go up to my effects library and go to templates, go to fusion, and let's look for shaders. The one I want, the brush metal looked okay, but chrome really looked pretty good. So I'm going to bring in chrome, and I'm going to need to add in a few notes. The main one is going to be replace material. I'm going to add that in, and then I'm just going to place it between the text 3D and the merge. Now we have this nice chrome look, and this will overwrite anything that you have on your 2D text. So if I go to my 2D text and I try changing the color, it's not going to do anything. We've overwritten it with this material. So what about this front? Why don't we do an image on the front? So I'm going to go to my instance text. I'm going to go over to image. I just need to make sure that this is de-instanced. I'll have it in image. I'm going to change it back to tool. Make sure that this is de-instanced well. We don't want to mess with anything. Now we can put in a video. Now I have this media here of fire and I want to put it in. And oddly enough, there's no input for it. That white input should have popped. My best guess of why I can't get an input is because I made an instance of that before changing this to an image. If I had done it after I had already changed this from solid to image, then it probably would have come as well. But we can get around that. If I go here, I'm just going to rename this media fire one. And then if I go over to my instance, I go down to this color image. I type in fire one, hit enter. It still didn't have that input show up, but it did actually work. So if I go to my merge, you can see it right there. You can also tell it worked because if I go and rename this, it updated it right there. Now I can do one more thing to make this a little more interesting. If I want to, if I go and select this one material, remember I did that with the bevel. If I unselect that, since I actually have these overlapping, you can kind of see the material underneath it. And I can go down to bevel material. Let's de-instance that and I can give it you know, its own look, Let's make it yellow or something. Now, if I add enough camera 3D into this merge, I can just move this camera into position. I can just move this camera back. I'll bring the render up in the viewer. And then I'm gonna to go to my camera, just keep moving it back until the text is in there, center it. And hey, look at that. And if this ever moves in too much of an arc for you, you can always size it down. Just go back to your path, go down to size, and you can bring that in a little bit. You can see that dot there and then we have a little less of an arc. And there you go, now you have your own animated text. Again, just so you remember, go to your 3D text here, right click, add a follower, go to your modifiers, do your timing on your follower, go to shading, go down to position, keyframe that, you'll bring up a path, 
then you'll need to add two keyframes on whatever position that you choose. I hope this was helpful. Have a great week and we'll see you in the next video. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm.